let's uh, jump into this, man. Our biggest concerns right now with Caleb Williams heading into the current season. I feel like a lot of people have pushed their concerns out of the way. They've just, hey, nope, we're not concerned about anything anymore. Caleb's got players. He's got a defense. We are not worried about this man being a rookie at all. Here we go. Do you have concerns starting this season off with Caleb Williams coming in that you feel like need to be addressed during the season? I don't know what happened. A truck just hit the building in the back of something. I don't know what that noise was. All right. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I, I think I do just to start off because my my whole thing is uh, how how are you gonna make it so Caleb doesn't have to doesn't have to go out and play like Superman or he doesn't feel like So that. your concerns are more with the team than they are with Caleb. Yeah. Be, be, because I I know I know what Caleb can do. It's just about honing it in so that way he knows, hey, like I said, like we talked about yesterday. You got a good enough team. You don't have to do everything. And I think my thing is you have to make him like you you have to bring him into this offense slowly. And then sooner or later, as he picks it up, like the the bears at that point will be flowing. Like that that's that's my thing. Yeah. So yeah, that I I think that's my only concern. I think my biggest concern with Caleb right now is kind of what you said, but on his shoulders. Um, Is Caleb going to be able to break away from being Superman? Which has been one of the knocks on Caleb Williams to this point. He goes hero ball sometimes. Now, we see a lot of times there are reasons that he goes hero ball, but is he going to go hero ball too often? When you know you've got DJ Moore down there, when you know you've got Keenan Allen down there, there's more of an opportunity for you to go hero ball and get bailed out. Does Is the cushion that they provided going to give him too much leeway to play the hero ball game and not do the check down game, not do make the simple pass? That is my only concern because it's something that he's been dealing with in college. He hasn't had an option. Right. It's not him playing hero ball by choice. This last year, he goes seven and five because the offensive line is basically five Braxton Jones at the front going, oh, God, what, what, oh, my, watch yourself in the back. My bad. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. Get up. Get up there, Caleb. We, we appreciate you. you know I mean, so I, I think that, that is really my biggest concern with Caleb right now is do the tend. Are, are you going to be able to coach the tendencies that he had in college out of him? By the time your season starts. Um, <clears throat> I'm not too worried about it. I think that's why they hired Shane Waldron. If 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 uh, Russell Wilson and Geno Smith are competent, capable quarterbacks, then I think that that's why he was charged to, you know, to do that. They're going to bring in a guy that can develop a quarterback. So if um, we got the off season, things of that nature, you got the weapons. Like I I see improvement in the line. I know I can't say that it like I think the line is. Great, but if that center, um, it was interesting. Like to see, um, did you see that that um, that new video from with uh, nineteen twenty? Yeah, the new nineteen twenty. Yeah, yep. the, the assistant, the director. He yeah, broke yeah, out yeah. a couple of plays. Trying to get showed, in touch with him, brother. Yeah, he, he showed he showed uh, the center Ryan Bates where you know he showed some plays where both the centers that they had uh, signed. Yeah, you know there is a um, you know ability like. I like the fact that there's there's some improvement, but I don't know if I'm 100 percent sold, which is why like I keep I see some comments where it's like we want this offensive talent with the receiver. I'm like I still want my quarterback to have time to throw the ball. If I can get an offensive lineman, great. If I can get a defensive lineman because that means I got a short field, that's even great too. So that's how I'm looking at it. I'm not that worried about them because I think they've done the things to put in place for this guy to be successful. The, the offensive scheme and talent. The scheme and they put the talent in place for the personnel. Yeah. So I think that we should be able to kind of have a little bit of I think we should be able to believe in what Poles is doing and that he's seeing his plan out. And I think I think too, even going back to it, you know, he if if, if you go back, just even if you're focusing on Shane Waldron, yeah. he makes sure you keep he makes sure that as the quarterback you keep the turnovers down. Like the, in in Seattle, those two years that Geno started, um, in, in Seattle, the two years that Geno started, you had eleven picks. 
And then you had you had nine picks. Um, I, after uh after this uh, last season that he, that he just played, now you get now you really can get somebody that can go down, stretch the field, and then even if you look at his um like like Geno Smith's completion percentages those two years, twenty twenty two he almost you completing seventy percent of your passes. Yeah, twenty twenty three he's completing uh sixty five percent of his passes. So listen, he's gonna make sure that. At, at minimum, when the season starts, Caleb will be able to take those checkdowns. Um, when when the season starts, make sure you take the same stuff. And when it's there, he's gonna be able to open up the playbook to let Caleb Caleb be able to be um the natural QB that he's been up until this point. Shout out to uh, Lord Crimson, but I'm looking at his comment where it's like Waldron he didn't develop Russell Geno. They were major best by the time Waldron got him. But he do, he developed. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not uh, well, Gino. no, he no, developed Gino. the portion. He didn't develop Russ. He developed the portion of Russ's Russ's game. He developed Gino. Right. He Gino. did develop Russ to a point. To say he didn't develop Russ is untrue because Russell Wilson was unwilling to attack the middle of the field all until Shane Waldron got there. It was like you have these weapons wide open running down the field. You just have to trust that they're going to be in the spot that they're going to be, and you have to put the football there. If they're not there, that's on them. Yes, it does show up on your resume, but that's on them. And I think that that's something that Russ started to do that last year in Seattle. It's something that's disappeared since he's left Shane Waldron. Geno Smith, he absolutely helped turn into that quarterback. Geno, Geno Smith was, was horrible. Dead. Geno Smith was horrible. You cannot say – you can say he was a vet and all of this, and he had been in the NFL, and all, that has nothing. Nobody has was, nothing to do with his actual ability on the field. The contract he got, no one – you would have never told me. If you would have told me – because uh, when did he get drafted, like ten years ago or seven, eight years ago, you would have never expect Gino you know, to get a second yeah. contract. No, he Shane Walter gets credit for developing a quarterback. So I think that's why they got this guy to do what he's here to do. We got a rookie quarterback. He's got some talent. The thing I like about Caleb is that it's not he's not a run first quarterback though. He's running side to side trying Absolutely. to make all the extra plays, but he's not trying to sacrifice his body unless he absolutely has to. So he's looking to pass first, which is a good trait to have versus a lot of times some of these rookie quarterbacks, they, they're running first. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Once, the, once the pressure comes around and, yeah. and they, they get And he's going to have guys getting open too. It's not just that he's passed first. It's the, he's passed first. He's going to run side to side and he's going to have DJ Moore. Yeah. <laughs> and and Keenan Allen. Yeah, I mean, even if you go back and look at Caleb's highlights, all the, yeah, so most of the wild plays that you saw, like – even even the pass play, uh, because the offensive yeah, line yeah. is just getting it, torn. Even when the offensive line is getting torn, his eyes stayed down the field. Yeah, so that, that's one thing that, he, that he'll be able to do um, off rip. So yeah, I I literally like I said, I have no com- I have no questions about Caleb. My questions is about Shane to the point like, how are you going to limit like how much you're going to limit him? To the point, like he does, he doesn't have to go out there. Well, and be, and I, be I still, I still have questions about Caleb, but they're more so, you know, like, do you want to be Superman? Is that something that that you're going to rely on at times? Right? Listen, you can have your eyes down the field as much as you want. That don't help you if you get hit in the chest. True. Yeah, True. I mean, and the NFL is a different speed. There's going yeah. to be a a learning curve that he's going to have to get into as he gets into the NFL. What? If you're sitting there, yeah, you want to you want him to keep his eyes down the field. You want him to keep his footwork there. I don't want him running out of the pocket too quick because he's sitting here like, yo, I've, every time I see my right tackle go down, that's the end of it. Well, you got a right tackle that's willing to recover. You got a right tackle that's willing mm-hmm. to fight back. You're in a different situation here in Chicago than you were at USC. What, what I like, though, is that by, by Caleb coming to this team the way that they have it set up, very rarely, like we've said over and over again, a lot of times a rookie quarterback, number one pick, usually goes to a very bad team. And then what ends up happening, they develop bad traits. Then they, they don't learn how – some of them can develop bad traits. The great ones will overcome the adversity and hopefully not get damaged. Like the worst extreme case is a David Carr, right? No yeah. line. Oh, he gets shell-shocked. He, he can't – he's a David shell Carr. of himself. Yeah. You know? And then you have situations where, unfortunately, like an Andrew Luck, the team got old. And the line, he was still a good quarterback, but he, he was taking a beating to a degree. But he was still a, a competent, great quarterback, you know, maybe like a Peyton Manning where they were building around him. And so but 
he this guy has the ability or the chance to have a lot of things in place where he can come out firing almost like a Patrick Mahomes situation because yeah. he inherits a great team. Now this the difference is that Mahomes being the the, the, the Chiefs traded up to get him. Right. What, was he a thirteenth or eleventh pick or something yeah, like yeah. that? Uh, Mahomes was 11. Yeah. So they traded up to get him from where they were before being the 13 and 3 team. So that worked out for him. The Bears and getting the number one pick, and they're, you know, a middling team where they're they're ascending. So he's inheriting a much better situation where I feel like he won't develop hopefully bad traits because all these things are in place for him and he can really thrive instead of having like shell shock and, you know, he develops some bad traits that he shouldn't develop as a quarterback. Yeah, I, I I just think about it too. Like he already knows that, like, yo, I had to play perfect. I had to play perfect at USC again. Like, even going, he back, had to put up sixty points yeah, at USC yeah, to yeah, win. Yeah, 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 I mean, like, <laughs> he, he, he's looking over now at practice. Like, I mean, you know what that is, DJ Moore. Yeah, Sam. I Darnold mean, you know what that is? That is Kenan Allen. Oh, All that is Coco Man. Like, I I think he's coming in knowing that he doesn't have to play perfect. So now, listen, it, it's um like it's like we've been saying. Once he gets drafted, it's on saying to continue to develop him. But there's certain things that I think he already knows up here. And that mentality, like, hey, I got a great defense. Hey, on. So we, we got 200 in the chat, by the way. Uh, 200 in the chat. 200 in the chat. We got over 200 in the chat. 200. 200. 200. 200. Yeah, 200. No, I think, I think here's the thing. Like, when you when you look at Waldron or when you look at Caleb and what he's going to be building with Waldron, you also realize he's coming into an amazing situation. Yeah, that won't be here forever. There's going to be oh, ups yeah, and downs. Yeah. You got to develop this guy through it. Now, I'd, I'd rather you develop him through the situation you're coming into. I'd rather you develop him with Keenan Allen, with DJ Moore, with Cole Komet, with Gerald Everett. But you also got to keep that situation high. You got, you, because eventually there is going to be the Pat Mahomes situation that comes in, and that's a lot of times where we start to see quarterbacks have that drop off, have that fall off. I, I look at somebody like Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb was amazing. He literally was an amazing quarterback. Or not Randall Cobb. Randall, Randall Cunningham. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Randall Cunningham. Like, I'm bro, tweaking. I, I was like, Randall Cunningham. I'm tweaking. Yeah. Randall Cunningham was an amazing quarterback <laughs> until one man left. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want a guy to come in. When, when I say hero ball, that's what I mean. You don't want his traits and his abilities to be developed based on that guy's down there somewhere. He can do it. You want his traits and his abilities to be based on this guy can play. There's tons of upside here. And you continue to be able to be the reason that your team is successful. Not your team is the reason that you are successful, which yeah. is a lot of times how it ends up falling. I, I think, too. Um, what we hopefully should happen, of course, bar injury or anything like that, as he's ascending and learning how to play quarterback with the talent that he has, because these guys will not be here at the end of his career if he has a 10 plus year career. So oh, yeah. in that transition, as he's learning how to play quarterback, there's a certain bar that he should put, start at. Right. I mean, if we want him to be here, the greatest of all time or one of the top the, the greats, instead of being down here, you know, he starts at the middle. And then hopefully within this year, he ascends to being a great quarterback. Yeah. Because in, in my opinion, he's going to have like two or three games coming out because no one has tape on him. We're going to see what happens in week four, Depends five, six. Depends on what your first three teams are. I'm just saying, yeah. but. Like nobody no can have tape on you and like you can go up well, against. Who are some of the teams we play on? This? Oh, we got the Rams on this mug uh, this well, year. Aaron Donald um, retired. So that's, that's a, a I mean, positive. all retired. Huh? I mean, Aaron Donald retired, but that helps. So that helps. But Aaron Donald never was a uh, factor really against the Bears. But my, my, all I'm saying is that I'm not, just in general, there's no tape on the quarterback. You don't know his tendencies. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, he's good enough to just play in general, and then that they get tape on him. I mean, it's just like, like remember, Will Levis came out. <laughs> oh my God! It's the second coming of whatever. He, he had a game. Like, within two games, he's averaging 160 Bruh, yards. Kid, passing. you can tell them no, the only two he, games kids yeah. saw. Kid <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> love Will Levis, bro. Like, what you see? It was this guy's got it. Hey, bro, kid ain't watching Will Levis game after <laughs> like, that. You can't do that. This, no, this but like, but it. like for real, like if your first three games are like Detroit, San Francisco, and Houston. 
Yeah, yeah it's a tough stock to the season for that young boy. Yeah, I, mean, it's like, I understand that. All I'm saying is just in generalities, there's no tape on the quarterback. When he comes out uh, and plays, they don't know what his tendencies are. Now, if he lights it up, they're going to see some things. They're going to try to adjust to that. And then we're going to see how he adjusts to those type of adjustments. And so you might he might struggle for about four or five games in the, in the middle. But because we got a defense that can, uh, you know, help hide some of those things or we have a running game or we have these receivers yeah. that can bail them out where it's like, OK, just check down for now. Yeah. Until you, what are you seeing right now? What, are, what kind of plays work for you as you start to make that that next change? Because it could be like even the Brett Farr situation with uh, back in the day with um, um, Holmgren, right? Go there's back a, home, there's yeah. the famous scene yeah. of like, get him out of there. You know what? No, no. Put him back in. Let him let him do what he. And so, because he has to register, right? And right. that hopefully, I don't think there's going to be any issue about yeah. him. There's no question about him getting. He's playing. Like, Nobody's he's putting in Tyson. <laughs> no, and I think that's it. like even when Yurko talks about right, like his time when they brought in Brett in Green Bay. Um, you know, he he was on that defensive line when Brett Favre comes in. He talks about how you. They were patient with Brett because they knew what they were trying to find. Uh -huh. They saw the highs mm -hmm. and they were willing to deal with the lows because of the highs. That's also a very different NFL, though. No, no, it's just. Yeah, I mean, but, but I do agree with you. With there, the player. There, there is a patience that needs to be had there. And Courtney had an article on this. Maybe we'll talk about this a little bit more in depth tomorrow, where she was talking with all the teams that seem like they have developed or, or have a part in developing some of these quarterbacks. And, and that's on ESPN.com right now. But she basically sits there. And, and the one theme that continues to pop out to me is patience. When you hear Andy Reid talk about it, when you hear Matt LeFleur talk about it, right? When you hear all of these guys talk about developing a quarterback, they talk about patience. They talk about, listen, there's going to be some things that you just got to work through bumps with this guy. And I think that's the one thing the Bears have never afforded a quarterback. Well, they Mitch had to be good by year three, or it's over. Mitch, uh, Justin had to be good by year three, or it's over. Uh, Jay, I mean, I guess that's the one guy we afforded. Uh, Mike Glenn had to be good within the first three games, or it's over. And, no, and thank God protect, it was. They were trying to protect Trubisky, which yeah. is another example of yeah. if he sat the year that he was supposed to, does he develop a couple things to help with his development? But once he gets Not in with the Mike game, Glenn in front of him. Huh? <laughs> not with my glenn in the front no i'm just saying that because they didn't do a good i need job. you to help me develop they didn't not do that. a good job setting him up for success so he had to, he was thrust into the starting role early he was not supposed to play and you know but all of that shows you how bad the, yeah. the structure of the management the coach didn't want him the coach wanted someone else the gm is you know they're making decisions where now gm's hoodie fired. up he's hiding out yeah it's like you know you can't do that and so now you're not yeah. giving that quarterback, the ability to develop. And so now we're back. We're now on our third quarterback since 2017. Yep. I mean, I think. By hey, the way, 200 in the chat, 72 likes. Let's get these likes hey, up over 100 likes. Let's get them over 100. Come on now. A perfect scenario that I think of, like, if you look at like, we all saw, like, but like Buffalo, Buffalo Josh Allen wasn't always Buffalo Josh Allen. Like, we. Like we no, I thought him. Josh Allen was one yeah. of the worst picks you could have ever made. We, so when we, when we, I saw him, what was that? He, he had, had a horrible completion percentage. No, no, he got to a playoff game. Yeah, no, he got to and a playoff game and stunk it up. It was legitimately, bro, like it wasn't like he wasn't bad, but like his decision making was so bad. I'll never forget. He threw a lateral with his left hand. <laughs> Bro, that was at the end of the to game. To the and defense, the and it cost him the game. Like if he had just taken the tackle. They would have won. The, they they were in a position. I want to say for a field goal or like they they could have yeah, gotten close or something like that. And yeah. like Josh Allen just like lateraled it left, and the defense got it and they scored a touchdown. It was like, oh god. Are you talking about recently? No, no, no this was like nah, Josh Allen nah, maybe third year, okay, yeah. second or third Se year. I think it was second. Year. But he got, and then, but then again, he got the right coordinator, and Dable took him to another place. Now, now that Dable's left, I mean, he's kind of like, you know, he's oh. Everybody wants him to extend to be the next great thing, but it's like uh, that, that that coordinated that system that worked together. That was the right pairing. Yeah. And so now you're seeing even Dable's not being able to, he's not necessarily a great quarterback whisperer that he's supposed to be because, you know, Danny Dimes is like, I mean, he's kind of What's up with your boy, Ringo? Hey, Ringo, what's, what's going on with Danny Dimes, bro? What's going on there? Uh, Tommy up. Cutlets. Hold on, hold on. He got four wins out of Tommy. Tommy Cutlets. At, the, bro. at this point, <laughs> he got four wins out of Tommy. Yeah, he bro. did. Keep Tommy in Four there, bro. Wins out of time. Nah, I so heard. if you get so if Marvin Harrison Jr. fall to six, you taking a quarterback? 
Nah, so so basically what they saying is they would take bro if if Marvin Harrison Jr. falls to six, because what they saying is they're gonna take Malik Neighbors. And I think we got 33, so we're gonna take Bo Nix. That would be y'all don't awesome. have 33. The Panthers have 33. Oh, you said 30. Uh, it, it, oh, it's, I'm, it's, I'm it's, we got Bo we Nicks. got somewhere near 30, and they're talking about taking Bo Nix. Well, I will. Which I would. I'm. I, I guess would, giving Bo Nix MHJ is not a bad like, situation I, to be I, in. I, I ain't mad at or like, Malik Neighbors. That's like yeah. Andy Dalton with uh, uh, Chad. No, they drafted uh, the other receiver. AJ. A- yeah. AJ Brown. Yeah, AJ Johnson. AJ Green. Oh, AJ yeah, Green. Yeah, AJ Green. AJ with Green. and then they got Dalton in the second round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was like immediately after they got rid of Ocho and Carson Palmer. That's crazy. Definitely helps to go get the Red Rocket when you already got AJ Green on the table. The other AJ Green, by the way, there was two of them. What's the other one? He also was just an NFL wide receiver, but he wasn't as good. <laughs> I think he's a streamer now. I want to say he's a streamer or uh, something like that. Yeah. Well, shout out to him, man. Hey, man, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Show love. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Let us know your thoughts. Do you have any concerns on Caleb Williams moving forward? Um, wait, wait, like wait, hold, I, on. hold on real quick. What you got? Brandon, what you got? Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Look, this is the point. I want all those quarterbacks to go to the top six because that means none that of we, them are. I'm just saying, like, I don't care if Bo Nick, who cares? Is he if he goes six, that is great for us because someone's dropping. Well, he ain't gonna go six. He's guys. saying they would take Bo Nix in the second round. I, I know, but I'm just saying I, like, number four, nobody, number I don't care about Bo Nix like that. Got. So that, that, <laughs> that's a long way from 33. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that, 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 we got busted field goal. <laughs> 10, 47, 70. If he's good, do you call him Big Nicks and are you comfortable with Oh, that? my God. <laughs> are you comfortable with that nickname? Because I feel like that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Bro. Big Nicks to MHJ. <laughs> yo, that, yo, that's wild. That's MHJ that, yo, down I, the I, sideline, Big Nicks was all over him. <laughs> yo, that's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. No, is that crazy? Oh, That's someone asked right. in the chat earlier. We are we are going to uh, do a live draft party uh, Thursday. That I mean the draft the Thursday night. The Thursday night of yeah, the draft. Will, yes, I I may be at Soldier, but the team will still be here doing the live the draft team. party, reacting to everything that is happening right now. Um, everybody in the chat, like yo, Big Nick's what? Pat Wilder, oh, really not Molly Moore. Wow. Hey, hey, that's crazy. Okay. Big Nick's energy, bro. That, I'm not. I'm not. That's a. No. That is a t-shirt. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. That's a that, t-shirt. That, that, that's a t-shirt. That's better than freaking Nick <laughs> Foles nickname. It's it's just crazy. We would <laughs> we would get Marvin Harrison Jr. a general wide receiver again, and then not have a QB. And not have a QB. You'd have Bo Nix. Hey, hey, my you would man. have young old uh, <laughs> Eli Manning. Like Bo Nix hey, is young man. old Eli Manning. Hey, bro, he's like he's twenty four already. Hey, my man. By the time the season starts, gonna, I think he'll be what twenty five. Dexter Ramirez, so you guys gonna talk about Washington offer to Chicago for the number one pick? Or was that just a rumor? As far as I have heard, as far as I've seen, yeah, they're not trading. <laughs> no, as far as I've heard, as far as I've seen, that is just a rumor right now. Um, I will find out more in the coming days. But as far as I know, that is just a rumor right now that Washington, um was willing to offer the world for Caleb Williams. And even if it is, here's the thing. Does that not tell you, if you are in polls we trust, which I think most of us are, does that not tell you what Ryan Poles thought about Justin Fields? Mm. No, they want. <laughs> King Book of World, that's facts. The old credit music was better. I don't know what Jordan threw on there now. I'm not well, a fan of it. Yeah, it was a, a, uh, it's a bad guitar solo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, hey, Joe, you, you, know, you know what I think well, about that? Throw the camera on yourself real quick. No, no, <laughs> no. Go ahead. Not doing it. Go ahead. <laughs> Joe, I got a question for you. I want you to answer the question. Nope, not doing it. Joe, Joe, Joe what are your thoughts <laughs> on Big Nick's energy? What are your thoughts on that? No thoughts on that. You have no thoughts. Nope. Not at all. Uh, guys, you can hear Joe's voice in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm removing that. <laughs> Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Show of love. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. Pod will be up over on iTunes, Spotify, all of that stuff. Make sure to tune in with me over on Patreon tomorrow. And, of course, we'll be live for the Daily Show tomorrow as well. As always, man, it's your boy, Pat the Designer, back at it again to continue watching our Chicago Bears, Chicago Bulls, all of that content. Tune in with all of the 
uh, sister channels on here. And, of course, tune in daily over here at the Witty City Breeze as well for Stefan Adon and the super producer, Joel Holt. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. One love. Bear down. Peace. One I sh- love. I should have put the freak. I should, when I called your name, that's when I should have put the crap.